Thank you. So uh, why do we do this type of large scale um, genetic studies? And, and for this audience, it's probably obvious that, that we try to find new tools and new ways to uh, speed um, the uh, transition of initial discoveries to, to treatment and, and prevention. And really this type of biobank uh, studies, which uh, have a, a strong genetic component is, is one way of doing that. And uh, this slide, which is again familiar to many of you, uh, tries to highlight the, the four uh, cornerstones that, that uh, our studies in Finland stand on. And one is, is um, uh, built from the population isolate perspective, which is a key instrument for genetics and, and how some of the studies over here are maybe some, somewhat easier than um, in more mixed population. Health registers you have been talking about already uh, yesterday. Uh, another key component, the biobanks we just heard about, again, a third component, and then of course, genome, the developed and uh, built uh, genome, genome data that obviously can be done in any place in the, in the world. Uh, the national registers, I'm not going into uh, describe them more, but obviously the key is here that it's, it's something which is nationwide, it's something which concerns every uh, resident in Finland, and uh, which even if these uh, registers were built for administrative purposes, they contain a lot of uh, in important data that can be used for research. And you have heard how this has been now uh, aim aiming to, to be facilitated and uh, how this is combined by the uh, national uh, identification number. Uh, the government backing has been key in, in developing this, and, and there have been really some visionary people uh, years ago uh, when uh, three ministries together started to build this, and we are really grateful for that. Without that type of work, we wouldn't be here where we are today, and this was very active uh, until the pre, uh, how do I say, till the pre uh, um, COVID era, hopefully it, it again activates once we are a little bit over the pandemic uh, crisis. So the FinGen research project, first of all, it's key to remember that it's a research project that's key from a regulatory perspective that, that is understood that uh, this is something that has a beginning and uh, potentially an end and has research questions why this type of data is used. It was initiated in 2017 with the aim to collect 500,000 individuals, which is, which is almost 10% of the population, not quite, but almost. And <clears throat> the, I, one of the foundation was that we already have, just as Oli was describing, we already had existing sample collections, mainly in THL, uh, which is the National uh, Institute for, of Health and Welfare, uh, that kind of was a seed to get this study going. Um, so the, again, the cornerstones of this particular project are obviously the uh, citizens, the residents who provide their biobank samples, the National Health Register, which uh, builds the core of our um, phenotype data with the special and very important aspect that since this is lifelong data, it means that we, uh, we can follow the data in a longitudinal way from birth uh, to death. Due to the uh, isolated nature of our population, so we were discussing, or, or uh, Sandra was, uh, during Sandra's talk, there, there was discussion about sequencing uh, very large numbers of the populations. So in, in fact, in the Finnish setting, uh, 
we can have a four month sequencing, meaning that we don't have to sequence everyone. We have sequenced thousands of, of fins, uh, roughly whole genome sequencing, roughly 10,000 fins, exomes of 20,000 fins. And this uh, builds a uh, national imputation backbone so that we can, we have a specially finished designed um, GWAS array that we can use and using this uh, population specific imputation uh, backbone, we can uh, identify variants down to one in a thousand and, and even slightly lower, but order of magnitude in, in, in those, um, those ballparks. And this builds then the, um, the study sample of these 500,000 individuals to be used for association analysis. And we were talking about, Serena was, was um, uh, telling about that some of the challenges in, in getting uh, various uh, players together. And this is maybe one of the hallmarks of fin FinGen. First of all, all Finnish biobanks in all uh, Finnish uh, university hospitals, all uh, uh, universities that have a medical school are partners in the project, including uh, um, the uh, Finnish uh, biobank uh, cooperative that, that Oli was referring to. So basically all key players in Finland are in this area are uh, partners in the, in the project, including the Institute of Health or uh, and welfare, which works under the Ministry of Health and Welfare. We currently have 12 um, pharma companies um, as partners in a true research uh, setting. And uh, just as, as Serena was uh, alluding to, it hasn't earlier been easy to, to have an agnostic, uh, disease agnostic way uh, approach. But uh, I think the current era of genetics has shown that these type of, of strategies are, are needed. And here is exactly what we are doing. All diseases are of interest. <clears throat> when you think about going uh, from the citizen to the biobank and then uh, population health implementation there, we, we all know that there are a huge amount of steps and we cannot cover in one project all of them. And key is here uh, that in, in FinGen, uh, the, uh, the focus in on basic medical research together with industry, uh, the first steps of, of clinical translation as, as, uh, as well if possible, but clearly before we can go into real clinical uh, studies that is outside the current scope of, of FinGen. So uh, it contributes to pre pre precision medicine in two ways. First of all, obviously, to understand the genetic contribution of diseases and drug response, but also uh, we uh, learn about individual genome data. Again, uh, uh, referring to all this talk, to understand um, uh, some fundamental aspects of precision medicine. So where are we currently? We are now three and a half years um, in, to the pro in, in the project. And <clears throat> for the goal of 500,000, we already have collected 462,000 participants. And actually we, uh, these biobanks have, have been doing an absolutely fabulous job. Currently we are in a, in a situation that many biobanks have more samples than this, but we, for financial reasons, we cannot get them, uh, all of them in. <clears throat> and uh, uh, so, so in, a, in a way we are, uh, we have a first world problem here. Um, and the collection of samples includes prospective samples, which are mostly from hospital biobanks, and the so-called legacy collections, which include population health survey samples and disease specific collections, mostly housed by the Institute of Health and Welfare's Biobank. The uh, register phenotypes provide a 
very interesting way to expand the phenotype potential. And one of the keys is also that the current age of, of, of uh, the FinGen participants is relatively high. So there starts to be quite a lot of health uh, healthcare events already. Uh, so that per individual, there are a mean value of 340 healthcare uh, health events, including uh, of these some 186 drug purchases. And uh, once again, reminding about the opportunity to do, to do longitudinal analysis. And I think this is one of the uh, special hallmark, hallmarks of the Nordic countries where, where these registers have been uh, available now for decades and, uh, and, and they are extensively uh, collecting data. Okay, then we go to the data sharing and data protection that, that uh, without going into the details, uh, it's obvious uh, for, for this audience that data protection is a key thing and, and there's a, uh, quite, a, quite a strong uh, regulatory network, unfortunately changing all the time, which really makes a little bit of a challenge for a big project like this, that we are not in a stable legislative situation, but, but uh, we need to react all the time to new interpretations, whether that is on national or EU level. So, but the solution, how to share individual level data in a safe way, so that it cannot be downloaded, it's, it fulfills all the uh, uh, regulatory requirement, and still it can be Used. So our solution has been, when the project started, the, uh, in all aspects, the most safe, uh, data safe um, uh, possibility was provided by, by Google Cloud, uh, which is well equipped for secure uh, data analysis. We call the, this uh, our data analysis uh, area as an, as, uh, to a sandbox where uh, be, uh, where individual researcher have, have a secure access to, to, to see the data that they cannot copy it. Then we have something which we call the green area, which has summary level data, which is the one that most of us use on a daily basis. Uh, mostly dedicated analysts are the ones who, who go into the sandbox area. All uh, partners have then an a possibility through certain regulatory steps to go and, and, and analyze the data. There, we have quite strict steps that, that not anyone can go there, but, but there is training and there is all kinds of logging and all, all kinds of things involved. So I would actually argue that, that building the sandbox has solved a problem that some have even claimed unsolvable. And this seems to be something that, that many e EU countries have been actually most interested in how in FinGen have we solved this. So we currently can provide um, access to over 150 used users also outside EU. It fulfills all national laws, regulations and uh, e EU by GDPR and other regulation. And it and we think that it provides an example and a potential solution for, for others. This is already adapted in, uh, in, in one of the projects in UK or, or also, and currently Italy and, and a couple of other countries have, have also asked that if they can have this system, it's an open source system so that, that uh, we are more than happy to provide um, provide uh, uh, copies of, of, of the uh, environment, how that's built. Uh, summary statistics then, which doesn't have individual level data is downloaded all already over by over thousand scientists who are non-Fingen scientists from all over the world. What about discoveries? Uh, <clears throat> I would say, uh, dare to say that it has exceeded all our expectations. The fact that we have more than 400 Finnish specific disease associations 
identified some of them, risk alleles, some of them protective alleles. But this really, really has shown that we have an opportunity to look into uh, coding variants which are associated to diseases enriched in Finland. And we can, as a next step, dive into the biology of them by looking uh, at, at um, other than genetic aspects of the data. And Olli was already referring to, to, to an example, and there are others, but, but I think this is the clearest one, where uh, also polygenic and uh, individual high um, impact uh, variants uh, have, have impact on disease risk uh, in the population. Uh, related to how the interplay between, in this case, again, the PULP2 and PRS together modulate the risk of, of uh, breast cancer and throws the question that is our current uh, way of, of breast cancer screening uh, with mammographies, is it, is it an optimal way that it's uh, uh, one fits all or would there be an opportunity uh, using genetics to potentially a little bit adjust the current uh, way of, of, of uh, screening? And this uh, is obviously uh, fits for many other diseases, but the breast cancer is maybe the clearest one. And just to remind that, that after 12 months of embargo, all statistics of FinGen is available for the entire community. Currently, data freeze five, which includes almost 220,000 individuals. Their results are browsable uh, for whoever wants to do it. They have to log in because we like to know that how many people have actually downloaded the data. And as we saw that far more than 1,000 have done it. And I thank, Thank you for, for your attention. And this is a picture done before the COVID era. Thank you.